Thank you. Good evening and a warm welcome to the Rushcliffe Borough Council Annual Council Meeting. I would like to remind everyone that the meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. A recording of the meeting will be available afterwards on the Council's YouTube channel. In addition, under the local authorities, executive arrangements, meetings and access to information England regulations 2012, other people may film, record, tweet or blog from this meeting. The use of any such images or sound recordings is not under the council's control. Any councillor who wishes to speak should raise their hand and your request will be noted. You will be asked to speak in turn by me and then you may turn on your microphone. Once you have finished speaking, would you please turn off your microphone? In respect of voting, when asked by me, the councillors should raise their hand to indicate how they wish to vote. If a roll call is requested, councillors' names will be called out alphabetically by the monitoring officer. Please confirm your vote by saying for, against or abstain. A councillor may raise a point of order or make a personal explanation at any time by raising their hand and I will hear them immediately and my ruling on the matter will be final. I would like now to move to the first item on the agenda. Please be seated. Uh, please could Sophie Burkett come to lead us in a moment of reflection. Hello, and a big thank you to Sue for inviting me this evening. I'm Sophie Burkett, I'm a humanist, and I'm a fully accredited celebrant for Humanists UK. Humanists believe we have one life, and we each should make our life the best it can possibly be within the realms of the opportunities we have, and we should each play our part in our society. There are a multitude of ways we can do this. We can bring up our families well, look after our neighbours, look after our environments. We can volunteer. We can ensure we excel in what we're good at and strive to improve at things we're perhaps not so good at. To do any of these well, we need to use our wit to do what we know is right and not just what we're told is right. I imagine the footballers at Nottingham Forest will each have been working extremely hard to improve in their areas of football expertise, but also in their less expert areas, which has meant that this group of individuals has been able to coalesce as a strong team. To achieve this, each player will have had to play out of position at times, even if only for a few seconds. How justifiably proud must each man feel to have been part of the team that took Nottingham Forest to the playoffs and perhaps beyond. Now relate this analogy to yourselves. What better way to be part of your society than to step up and become a public servant for your borough? You all bring different expertise, values and interests to Team Rushcliffe BC. I'm sure there are times when citizens' needs and circumstances mean that you each have to quieten your qualms to be able to deliver the right result or progress the right development. But you do it, and I hope you do it with pride. We live in exceptional times, and over the last two years, councillors have had to guide the borough through the COVID-19 pandemic. Now we all have to face into the cost of living crisis and the stark climate change warnings that were reported earlier this month. The need to make our air, soil, water and green habitat more robust has jumped up the political agenda. We're lucky in Rushcliffe 
We have so many mature trees and ponds, large hedges, wide green verges, green lungs. I trust they continue to be in good hands. And to finish, thank you to Councillor Sue Malinder in her role as mayor over the last two years and all best wishes to Councillor Tina Combalak in the role of mayor 2022 to 23. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sophie. Uh, are there any apologies for absence? Apologies from Councillor Beardsall, Councillor Brennan and Councillor Way. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? There don't appear to be. Uh, so now we come to item three, to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting the Council held on the 3rd of March 2022. Councillor Robinson. Yeah, I'd like to move these minutes and uh, the recommendation to accept those minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Eddie Dean. Uh, yes, I'd like to second the, uh, the recommendation to accept the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. All in favour? I think that's unanimous. Thank you. So I declare that vote. Oh, sorry. Oh, one abstention. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I missed that. So. So, at last, I can do this in person. It was a strange delayed meeting in July 2020 when everything was conducted online and we were unable to thank you properly for all your hard work so, and your service to the borough during your term as mayor in 2019-20. So where is Councillor Jeffries? Oh, would you like to come and receive your portrait, Councillor Jeffries? I don't know how you're going to carry both of these things. I, I can okay. carry that. All oh, right, right, right. And uh, here are some flowers for you. Oh, Ooh. that's lovely. Right. Can we yes. hide, hide them somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, who's going to take Want them on show, surely. <laughs> well, that's splendid. That's really me. <laughs> I did suggest that we, to save money, because we should be saving money, as I've been mayor before, I said, look, I haven't changed much. Why don't you just put that? <laughs> oh, no, I don't have it. Um, I, may I, Madam Mayor, uh, say a few words? Uh, of course. Yes. Right, um, thank you. I think, do you uh, want to, Malinda, I think um, Morgan's just going to get a photo of you and Councillor Jeffries with the flowers. Do you want me to come around the yes, front? Oh, yes. Yes. <coughs> Shall I hold the flowers for you then? <laughs> Try not to drop them. That's lovely. Um, Madam Mayor. So no, I won't leave that. Well, we have to think. <coughs> you don't have to. Okay. Madam Mayor and everybody. In 1963, I married in Sheringham in Norfolk. And after all the celebrations, my husband put me in his car. We stopped at a garage on the way out and got rid of all the tin cans and all the other stuff which people had decorated the car with. And he drove me north. And he drove me somewhere quite magical. And that place was Rushcliffe. Now, he is a Welshman and I am a Norfolk woman. And people were very suspicious because they said, where are you going to live? And I said, we're going to live in Rushcliffe. 
and they were very disturbed. They said, hold on a minute, where's Rushcliffe? And I said, well, it's south of the River Trent. And they said, well, that sounded a bit funny to me. Are you sure, my darling, where you're gone? <laughs> and I said, yes, but I didn't really know anything about Rushcliffe. And then I found that it really was not there on the map. It was just a little bit of political shenanigans for the elections. And so for me, it had a wonderment. It's like the stories you hear as a child of an imaginary place. And do you know, Rushcliffe has been that a wonderful place for me ever since. And I immersed myself in my place of Cockgrave, which also is a magical place. And uh, joined in everything, the Women's Institute, uh, ran the Cubs, the Brownies, and so on. And then one day I had a phone call. Would you like to be mayor? Well, what? Yes. Right. Mayor. You know, and you will soon know, Tina, how magical that is. Everything they say about Rushcliffe is true. Yes, it is a magical place. We are all so lucky. And when you become mayor, you are invited everywhere. You don't just turn up. They really want to see you. They're waiting for you. They cut sandwiches. They put the kettle on. They've done everything to welcome you. How magic is that? And there's something even more magical. No politics. And everyone said, Christine, oh, she's been political since she was 14. You'll never shut her up. But actually, who wants anything to do with politics, especially at the moment? And you will have a wonderful year not being involved in politics. And you know, when you are mayor, you have a lot of people looking out for you. You have your colleagues here and you have a band of people hidden somewhere upstairs who look after you. They take care of the phone calls, the letters. They arrange where you are going, what time you'll get there, how you'll get there, and so on. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? And I thank all of them, and especially my colleagues who supported me throughout my year. It was magical, and you will find it's magical too, because you have so many people looking out for you. And I wish you all the joy that I had when I had the job. Thank you very much. Uh, right, so that was the first bit of my, my speech, which was to say thank you to Christine. And so now I'd like to thank the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Tina Cumberlack, for all her help and support over the past two years, which we weren't expecting. <laughs> and I wish you very well in the future. I hope you'll have a really successful time uh, as Mayor, providing the vote goes through, of course. Um, thank you. <laughs> we can't be sure about anything. So thank you also to all the members of the council who've worked with me through the last two years with online meetings, hybrid meetings, physically distanced meetings. And in particular, thank you for allowing me to have a second year after the lockdown 2020 to 21 experience. I always say Rushcliffe has the best officers of any council, 
and I'd like to thank all of them for all their support and advice during my term of office. And particular thanks go to the Democratic Services team, Kath Marriott, Sanjit Saw, Helen Tambini, Charlotte Craven Attack. I, don't, I think I pronounced your name wrong, sorry, Charlotte. Laura Webb, Tracy Coop, and Maisie Housden. So that's past and present. To the media team, Ed Palmer, Richard Lazell, and Morgan Brown, especially for making photo and video opportunities for me uh, and the borough when there wasn't much going on. And for the IT staff for making all those online meetings work. And indeed, everyone who currently works for Rushcliffe Borough Council and those who have recently moved on. I've added up all the events I have attended, and it's nothing like it is for most mayors. So I, because there were some quite considerable quiet times during the successive lockdowns. And um, I think there's about 70. Uh, events altogether that I've added up over the two years. But I do feel very proud to say that Rushcliffe Borough, unlike many others, did hold, hold quite a few events. So there was a wonderful multi-faith civic service, a civic dinner on an environmental theme. There were the, the wonderful proms in the park, the fantastic Rushcliffe Community Awards, on all the presentations that evening, the Christmas lights switch on in West Bridgeford and a Christmas party. Uh, oh, and there was a Christmas carol service as well. Thanks again to St. Edmund's Home Pierpont. And uh, I started with opening, the first event I did was opening the Lady Bay Open Front Gardens in July, 2020, where I was dressed in steampunk attire, which goes really well with the mayoral chain, if anyone wants any advice on wearing a corset for with uh, with the mayoral chain, it's it's very good. Uh, not for everyone, possibly. Um, and then the last thing I've done was this afternoon, where I visited the marvelous Ashley Special School in Cockgrave, and I had an absolutely wonderful time this afternoon. It was just like Christine said, very much welcomed. Every class that I went into made me a card. So they've all made me a card look. Some people managed to find a picture of me. <laughs> These were the oldest. And they've got all their names there. And that's the other one. So those are the, the three classes that they have there. So that was a marvelous finale. For, for being mayor. I chose three charities to support. Music Works, uh, which works with the Heron Music Cafe in Lady Bay and elsewhere, and has been working online for much of the time. And they help people with dementia and their carers, uh, people with learning difficulties, people with mental health problems, and indeed anyone of any age, the local play group goes there and they, uh, help people through music, and it's really been marvellous to support them. Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust, who I'm sure you all know, and which, look at, which looks after many areas in the Rushcliffe Borough, and the Trent District Community First Responders, who work with the ambulance service to provide absolutely excellent first aid before the ambulances can get there quite often and save lives. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to have the fundraising events I had hoped for, but I would like to thank Councillor Gordon Moore and his wife Georgia and Councillor Ben Gray, who both helped me raise funds through organising, in the case of uh, Gordon and Georgia, walks around the fascinating Saxon Dale and the Wilford Hill Garden Sale event. Thank you to everyone who's donated. And that includes a couple of weeks ago, the parents who made a donation when I face painted their children at the Lady Bay Arts Trail. And I doubled the amount of that. And in 2021, I also walked around the borough boundary, um, quite often accompanied by uh, Councillor Richard Mallander and my daughter Alice and others. So this is my 
it says 98.3 miles, thank you. But actually, um, by the time I'd got there by public transport, it's well over 100 miles that we actually walked, Richard. So, and there are some, some photographs there of various occasions when we did it. So that was, um, this is a bit of reuse. Here. So um, it's, we, we did it in pouring rain and very, very cold in February, right up to intense heat, which almost caused Councillor Richard Malinzer to faint, I think, as we walked towards uh, Hickling. And um, uh, so, thank you very much. Um, and I saw some fascinating things in, uh, in Rushcliffe on that walk. So one of them was, I don't know whether you know this, but there's, I'm sure some people do, there's a spa at Langer. It's not the sort of spa you'd want to spend the weekend at, but there is a spa at Langer. And there's also, I was very impressed by the chain ferry at Normanton. Again, not something you could put uh, a large vehicle on, but, uh, but nevertheless, they were two very interesting little things, but lots of, lots of things to see throughout the borough. Um, all my terms been conducted zero waste and carbon neutral. I've traveled everywhere on foot, by bike, or on public transport. And that includes last Friday, when I attended the celebration for the life of Ethel Gordon Fenwick at Thoroton. So that was via Aslockton railway station and a 42 minute walk along a road with no pavements and national speed limit, with a hat on. <laughs> And uh, that was a tremendous event to celebrate this amazing woman. She was the first state registered nurse. She's state registered nurse number one. Um, she was a campaigner for professional nursing and uh, for nurses across the world and for women's suffrage and education. Um, so I would also like to have someone else come up now to receive something. So um, I would like to thank very much my consort, Councillor Richard Mallander. Um, we've had several highlights. He's done lots of dancing with me, proms in the park, uh, the Newark Town uh, charity Kaylee, which was uh, absolutely marvellous. That was in February. And quite recently, the Ashfield Council uh, charity <coughs> ball, um, which wasn't ballroom dancing. Um, but it was absolutely uh, brilliant. Uh, thank you for holding my bag and arranging me and uh, pointing out what time the train is and things like that and being completely wonderful at all times. So this is your... We, we're not giving you a bunch of flowers. It's a special, a special uh, themed uh, i've mentioned it before so uh, because we didn't want to just give you a bunch of flowers uh, one of the occasions i attended was the licensing of the reverend jonathan mole in lady bay in uh, september 2021 and since then uh, the reverend mole has been my chaplain and he is actually at an Ascension Day event, which is Ascension Day today, uh, that's this evening, and he sends his apologies and wishes us all well. Uh, but I will be presenting him with a plaque uh, at a future date. Um, and as you are aware, in order to be inclusive, I've started the moment of reflection rather than having the chaplain speaking at the beginning, although sometimes it was. Uh, so at the beginning of council meetings, we've heard from uh, humanist speakers like today, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist and Christian. Uh, so I hope that uh, people have enjoyed the different uh, people that have spoken. So thank you all very much once again. Uh, it is, uh, has been a very interesting time and uh, let's get on with the meeting. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I've, I've really got to take issue with you, unfortunately, one thing that you just said about Richard dancing, because I was actually at that event, <laughs> and that definitely was not dancing. In fact, we called the police, <laughs> because we thought there was something very wrong. 
Madam, Madam Mayor, I just want to say a few a few words really sum your year. I think the one word that really sums up your your way of being mayor is unique. I think that's fantastic because anybody who's such an important post for this uh, authority can bring that uniqueness. It's a real gift. And having been to a number of your events, you certainly actually did that. And you mentioned things like uh, the multi-faith introduction to our meetings has been absolutely fantastic. I think we've all enjoyed that. And we've all learned something from that as well. We've seen some of the dresses that you've actually worn, some of your appearance as well, which has been quite interesting. But great, you've always had the, uh, the chain on. And uh, you've always been a very, very fine ambassador for this authority, because that's really what it's all about. As you go to other authorities uh, and some of the events I've been there, it really is the most important function that we have in this authority. And everybody looks with great pride at Rushcliffe. And I think there is where you've represented very, very well indeed. I just also like to pick up on three charities that you chose as well. I think it was absolutely fantastic to have that balance of the charities and the contributions you made. I think also you're quite unique because I think you are the only mayor that's had two consecutive years as well, isn't it? So that will be unique. So I think we need to write something on your picture. Again, unique, <laughs> unique, uh, Malinda. Uh, I'd also like to pay great respects to uh, to, uh, to Richard as well. It's been absolutely fantastic in terms of when you've been out there as well. Again, very important to have that support. I know what it actually meant. And, uh, and again, uh, a very, very good ambassador for the authority. So, Madam Mayor, I'd like to thank you on behalf of all the members for all your wonderful contribution over two years. I appreciate it's been incredibly difficult and testing. So it's, it's, uh, it's an area that none of us love to get, unfortunately, many for the wrong reasons. But I remember it for the right reasons. The very fantastic work that you did and uniquely she brought this authority. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Uh, do you wish to speak? Um, Thank you. Yeah, just to echo what everyone's saying, thank you very much, Madam Mayor, for all you've done. I know we've particularly appreciated the um, moments of reflections that you've introduced, and I hope that's a nice lasting legacy here at Rushcliffe because it was really lovely. And um, I just wanted to thank you for all your work for the charities as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I agree with what Simon Robinson has just said. You've, you've been a great mayor. Uh, to walk around the borough must be make you additionally unique, I suspect, um, <clears throat> unless there's any former mayors here who can challenge you on that. Um, <clears throat> and as has been commented, the, the, um, the variety of thoughts for the day, effectively, thoughts for the meeting, I, I thought has been really enriching and I hope that something of that order continues. Uh, but thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. Councillor Malinder or anyone else who wish to speak? <laughs> I'd just, I just, just like to raise a possible conflict of interest. <laughs> wow, it's been a good company, good, good, it's been amazing. Um, Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, for everything you've done. It's been quite amazing and a unique couple of years, I think, for, for, for many reasons. Um, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything we've done. We'd be here all evening. There's a, there's a couple of things I would I would like to, to mention. Um, firstly, we've not just done all this. Sue has also been working all the way through in her jobs uh, as museums and galleries. Uh, and as a, um, a trade union uh, officer as well. That's continued all the way through as well. Um, also, we've had the, the marriage of the daughter Alice to the lovely Paul footballing lass uh, in the last couple of years as well. Uh, and um, we've got the upcoming marriage of Lizzie and Theo. And we've, got, we've had the arrival of uh, granddaughter Elodie in the last couple of years as well. It's been very, very busy all round, I think. Um, we've had a wonderful walk around the borough, um, along with um, Alice uh, and with a, a friend of ours uh, as well. Um, former mayors who are here will uh, recall that the mayoral chain comes in a rather large case. It's about that sort of size, that high, about that thick and very heavy. You can't put that on a bicycle. <laughs> So thank you um, for the, the creation of the, the little sort of cloth roll that's been very handy, which reduces the whole thing down to about this sort of size, which just about does fit in a bike pannier. 
so Tina, if you want to got some advice, you know, it's great. <laughs> um, also, I've had the joy of having the, the consorts chain, which is obviously um, was made many years ago for people with much more delicate fingers than I've got, because it's very, very fiddly to get the catch done. So good luck to whoever's picking that one up one. Um, we, uh, so we've visited many places, been on bikes, been on public transport. There's a railway station called Eltham and Austin, which is in one of the least used railway stations in the country. And in fact, when they produced the annual statistics, um, I think there were 12 entries. <laughs> and a family doing parts of the walk. We're still not quite sure who the other people were. But yeah, it's been an amazing couple of years. Thank you for the honour and the opportunity uh, of that. And thank you, Sue, for doing such a wonderful job and being a wonderful wife. <laughs> Councillor Thomas. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm very. Period. I particularly like to thank you for your very effective chairing of council meetings, sometimes with the added technological challenges caused by remote attendance. Even with COVID restrictions, you've managed to be out and about to represent the borough, and you've even done this while setting examples with. Those of you being vaccinated in your chain of office. Um, and two other images from your, all your media cover, coverage stand out for me. The first was um, next to the Stamford on Saw Village sign while on your epic walk around Rushcliffe. It was nice to see you reach the distant outpost of our ward. And the other image, it has to be riding the lion. <laughs> Um, I'd also like to thank Councillor Richard Mallander for all the support he's given you as your consort. It can't have been easy at times. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone else wish to speak? Okay, so. so Madam Mayor, I'd now like to present you with your picture. Flowers. Your book. Congratulations and some flowers. <laughs> I think round of applause for Actually today at Ashley School I have also been on a very bouncy trampoline <laughs> and uh, slid down um, a big slide as well so there you go. Um, as well as sitting on a lion. It wasn't a real lion, by the way. It was uh, one of those outside the, uh, the council house in the city. And believe me, they have very wide backs. I almost regretted it after I clambered up there. So uh, now uh, we come to item six, which is the election of the mayor for 2022 to 23. And so, are there any nominations, please, for the Office of Mayor of the Borough for 2022-23? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, if I may personally thank you and your, your consort, Richard, for an excellent two years on the difficult circumstances and, and the money that you've raised for your charities. Um, Madam Mayor, members of the public, um, officers, fellow councillors. I'm very pleased to uh, propose Councillor Tina Kummelbach uh, for mayor. I know there's been a couple of references it earlier, earlier this evening, but nevertheless, I'd like to formally propose her. I, I did, I think, a couple of years ago, propose her as the deputy mayor. And I'd just like to say, in my opinion, 
uh, that she and uh, a consort have done a first class job under difficult circumstances. And in my opinion, um, certainly is ready for the role of, of mayor uh, for the next mayoral year, 2022-23. Tina was elected to this council, I believe, in, 20, in 2009, uh, and she served on many, if not perhaps all the committees and uh, uh, working parties that we have. Um, so she's got great knowledge of, of the council and of Rushcliffe Borough. Um, I think she's passionate, and I, I don't use the word lightly. Tina is really passionate about rural affairs and the rural economy. Uh, and in particular, I know she's very, very supportive of the Grantham Canal Trust, and I would encourage everybody there to uh, take an interest in that uh, project. I did belong it 20 or 30 years ago, and they're doing sterling work, particularly in Tina's own ward of Hickling. And those of you that haven't been to Hickling Basin and walked along the canal, I would urge you to do it. It's a great place for wildlife, peace and quiet, and if you want some thinking time, that's the place to be for me. She's very active in her local community. She's been a chairman of, I believe, Hickling Parish Council, and she represents a raft of other parishes in her ward and visits them regularly and takes a thorough interest in things in those wards. In fact, don't take it the wrong way. Some people have likened you to a terrier. But once you get hold of an issue, you don't let go. You fight that fight to the bitter end. <coughs> and good for you, say I. You've been chairman of the Neighbourhood Plan. And I am a champion of Neighbourhood Plans, as many of you know. So well done to Tina and that working group for getting it adopted for Hickling earlier in this year. She's also been a magistrate and, as I say, involved with many organisations in her local community. I'm sure she'll make a superb champion, not just for the Borough Council, but for the whole of the Rushcliffe community in the next 12 months. As I say, she's passionate. She likes to get involved. She gets into the detail. And in my opinion, she'll make an excellent mayor. And as someone, I think the leader remarked, she'll make a really good ambassador. And that's what we want in these difficult times, a really good ambassador for us and for our local communities. So I have no hesitation in proposing Councillor Tina Kommelbach to be our new mayor. Thank you. Do uh, I have a second there? Councillor Butler. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And first of all, very well done on your uh, unprecedented two years and these, um, we kept hearing the word unprecedented over the last couple of years, didn't we? And you've had an unprecedented time as being our lockdown mayor uh, for the last two years. And I think for, for uh, 72 events in two years in, in the circumstances, and it's been pretty good guys. So jolly well, well done on that. And also I'm so pleased you finished well, your final engagement this year was at Ashley School. It's a very special place. And, yes. I, I, and I've been there several times and I, I know exactly how you're feeling uh, following your visit. Uh, so I'm very happy to second the nomination for Councillor Cumberlack uh, for Deputy Mayor for 22-23. I've known Tina for a number of, uh, uh, so I beg your pardon for Mayor uh, for 22 years, because she's been Deputy Mayor for two years. I'm in a habit now, you see. Uh, I'm very happy to second uh, Councillor Cumberlack for Mayor uh, for 2022 to 23. I've known Tina for many years because we actually work together because her uh, borough ward matches or crosses over part of my county ward. So we're often at meetings together. And I know full well how, as Roger has said, passionate she is about her residence and indeed Rushcliffe as a whole. Um, I think she, she's got a very in inquiring mind. You're very inquisitive. And I think we've all noticed this at various committee meetings when you uh, have been asking questions uh, of uh, uh, members and, and officers about whatever the issue is. And I think uh, this year that skill will come very useful as you go around the borough and meet all sorts of groups and communities and people 
uh, young and old, all ages, because I know that you will be genuinely interested to find out what they do, how they do it, and of course you will be, be constantly uh, having the interest of, Rush, of uh, Rushcliffe at heart. So, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, I, uh, as I say, I'm very happy to second the proposal for Councillor Tina Cumberlach for position of Mayor of Rushcliffe for 2022 to 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Are there any further nominations? So there are none. So uh, all in favour that Councillor Cumberlack be ele elected Mayor of the Borough of Rushcliffe for 2022 to 23. I think that's unanimous, thank you. So I declare that Councillor Cumberlack has been elected as the Mayor of the Borough of Rushcliffe for 2022 to 23. Extremely honoured and proud that you've elected me as your mayor for the coming council year. And I would like to thank Councillor Roger Upton and Councillor Richard Butler for proposing and seconding my appointment. I've much to live up to. Councillor Mullander, having been mayor for the past two years, coping with the alterations in our workings, meetings, and rapid use of technology. It was not an easy term and steep learning curve. COVID severely impacted her charity fundraising activities as well, and I hope to be able to continue awareness of the charities she supported. Councillor Mallander referred to her visit to Ashley as uh, earlier this, uh, well, today. As her deputy, I attended the Rainbows uh, Children's Hospice last week, and again had a wonderful, warm and loving experience. I have invited the area dean, Reverend Canon Stephen Hippersley Cox, to be my chaplain, but also hope my term as mayor. To this end, I shall be introducing a variety of readers to make reflective presentations before the business of full council meetings. My first reader in June will be from the Deaf Society. Um, excuse me, I need to turn the page. 
who will not only lead a moment of reflection, but will sign some of the meeting. I'm also inviting the representative from the Dyslexia Association. It is important in our roles as counsellors that we understand the different needs and forms of communication used by our Rushcliffe residents. My consort for the year will be my partner, Councillor Neil Clark, who as a borough councillor and former leader of this council will definitely be keeping on my toes, but always remaining three steps behind. <laughs> I was born in Birmingham and lived in Nottinghamshire from the age of 11. Firstly in Chilwell, which was then the old district of Rushcliffe before boundary changes, then later moving into the current Rushcliffe area of Ed Walton and on marriage moving to the rural areas of Kinalton, then Hickling. The majority of my adult working life has been devoted to helping facilitate better outcomes for people, places and events in Rushcliffe and Nottinghamshire. From working as a volunteer adult basic English teacher and literacy volunteer to owning and running for 25 years my own recruitment business, where I helped people further their careers and trained temporary secretarial staff, particularly for the legal profession. I'm motivated by justice and seeing justice to be done. Hence, I became a magistrate, chairing adult and youth courts, licensing appeal courts, drug and alcohol rehabilitation, and mentoring new mag magistrates for a further 25 years. I've now followed in my father's councillor footsteps being elected in 2009 as borough councillor for the rural ward of Neville and Langer. One of two of you may remember my father, Bill Jordan, as a Rushcliffe councillor. I chaired the community scrutiny group for a number of years and was until becoming mayor, chairman of the corporate overgroup view scrutiny group. As Roger said, I chaired the local parish council and neighbourhood plan steering group bringing the neighbourhood plan to successful adoption in March of this year. I'm a keen gardener and artist, and when restrictions allow, I enjoy skiing and foreign travel. I hope, therefore, my life's experiences will make a difference to my term as your mayor and make Rushcliffe, my late father, and my family proud. Thank you. Right, we now move um, yes. We now move to item seven, which is the election of the deputy mayor and to consider nominations for the election of the office of deputy mayor of the Rush Borough for 2023, 22-23 civic year. Um, Councillor Clark, I believe, is to move the proposal. Thank you uh, very much indeed, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, may I be the first person to say Madam Mayor to you? So I'm sure you'll get quite used to it uh, fairly soon, Madam Mayor. Uh, uh, but can I be the first to congratulate you on your election as Mayor? Uh, and I hope you have a very successful year. Uh, but I promise I will do my best to stay three steps behind. <laughs> But now to the deputy mayor that uh, is uh, to support you. Uh, and I have pleasure in proposing Councillor Debbie Mason for the role of deputy mayor. Councillor Mason joined the council in 1999 and was elected by her community to represent the Tolleton Ward, which includes Clipston, Norton on the Wolds and Plumtree. Early on, as well as working hard for her residents, she was chairman of the Environment Scrutiny Group before becoming a cabinet member for the next 18 years, with her portfolio including environment, housing, communities, and health and safety. She was deputy leader for several years before standing down from the cabinet in 2020. Away from the council, Debbie enjoys taking a French bulldog for a walk and is also a member of the group of the Friends of St. Mary's Church in the Lace Market. I'm confident that she will continue the traditions and be a fine ambassador in support of you, Madam Mayor. And I move that Councillor Debbie Mason be elected Deputy Mayor for the ensuing year 
2022-23. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Do I have a seconder? Councillor English. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, or can we call you Madam Terrier? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I fully endorse the comments and the reasons that Councillor Clark has emphasised the consideration of Councillor Mason to be elected into the role of Deputy Mayor. I want to give my support uh, in adding my recommendations as Debbie has been a great personal support to me, um, being a source of information and procedures from the time I joined the Council as, as a newbie um, six years ago, and the time we shared on the Cabinet. Debbie has been a dedicated ward member and has rehearsed from Council Clark since 1999, uh, and she's had 18 years on the Cabinet, so she's got a wealth of experience that she can bring to the role. And I know she's highly respected in her community by the work she does. <coughs> Debbie has the strength and character to be a great civic ambassador, a word we've heard several times this evening. And I think she'll be a great ambassador in representing our wonderful borough and supporting you as the mayor. Debbie's fully deserving, and it will be a great recognition for the services provided for the whole of Rushcliffe. Um, so I unhesitatingly second the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Inglis. Are there any further nominations? All in favour that Council Mason be elected Deputy Mayor of the Borough of Rushcliffe for 22-23. That seems to be unanimous. I declare that Councillor Mason has been elected as the Deputy Mayor of the Borough of Rushcliffe for 22-23. Would you like to come up and receive your chain? Well, thank you very much for uh, voting for me, everybody. Particularly thanks to Councillor Clark and Councillor Inglis for their kind words. Um, I felt quite embarrassed about it, but I enjoyed it as well. <laughs> but uh, I hope that I will be um, a good Deputy Mayor and support Tina in the job that she has to do. I think it's very important that uh, somebody supports the Mayor and helps her. I've already got something ready for her to raise some money. <clears throat> so um, I'm working hard on it as we speak. But thank you very much. And I look forward to uh, 
to working with everybody and to working with the borough of Rushcliffe. Thank you. Right, we now have item eight, the Mayor's announcements. <coughs> well, as yet, I don't have announcements. Um, I had deputy announcements, but not mayoral ones. However, I am going to announce my charities. But before I do that, I would like to thank the officers who have supported me during my recent term as Chairman of Corporate Overview Scrutiny Group. We went through a transition period which hasn't been easy, but I think was successful. And particularly, I would like to thank Charlotte Caven Atak, with whom I established a very successful, where is she? She's outside the door, oh dear. <laughs> with whom I established a very successful working relationship. I very much enjoyed my role and now look forward to the honor you have given me of being your mayor. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate Councillor Mason and look forward to working with her in her role as Deputy Mayor. The charities I've chosen this year are close to my heart. I am passionate about the environment, as has already been said, promoting the planting of more and more trees to green Rushcliffe and combat climate change. I'm also equally passionate about the Grantham Canal, maintaining water levels and feeding the dry sections. When we saw the rapid loss of water from the canal in Hickling Basin and Kinalton a couple of years ago, a concerned resident, Leslie Haig, who is here tonight, mooted the idea of the Grantham Canal Water Restoration Group and approached Peter Cadwallader, chairman of the parish council in Kinalton, and myself, who were equally concerned about water loss. And thus the group was formed. Our aim is to raise awareness, work with the Canal and Rivers Trust and Grantham Canal Society, and seek funding to repair the broken culverts and remove excessive reed growth in the Hickling Basin and Kinalton sections of the canal before moving further along the canal. It has been medically proven that water aids well-being and good mental health. This past two years have endorsed the therapeutic value of waterways for relaxation and mental health. A random survey on the canal established that people visit and walk the canal towpath because of the wildlife and tranquil waters, as has been borne out during the pandemic. CRT's motto is life's better by water. Doctors are now blue prescribing. Therefore, it is essential we keep the water in our canal. As a remainder waterway, the canal does not receive funding from DEFRA for this work and is reliant on charitable donations. The current maintenance outlined is estimated to cost between 30 and 70,000 pounds. Anyone wishing to make a donation should do so by accessing GCWRG online Marking their donation, GCWRG, slow. Slow is our funding name. Stop losing our water. As I've had occasion to use their services, my second charity is the Knots and Links Air Ambulance. Following a riding accident in 2003, I became very aware of the valuable service the Air Ambulance provides, not just for us in rural areas, but supporting the, red, <coughs> the regular ambulance service. Once again, like the canal, they do not receive government or taxpayer benefit and therefore entirely reliant upon donation. Each call out is approximately three and a half thousand pounds. Representatives of this service are here tonight and will be happy to answer any of your questions. I hope you'll be able to support these charities and raise awareness of their issues. Thank you. Now we go to item nine on the agenda, the leaders announcements. Thank you, Madam Mayor. May we first to congratulate uh, 
Madam Mayor and Deputy Mayor, and wish you all the very best in your year. Perhaps I could ask the Mayor if you could refrain from your concert from dancing, now, even though he's had a new hip. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to uh, announce my cabinet moving forward, and I, I reflect actually on the uh, minutes uh, reflection we had at the start. We talked about Nottingham Forest, but the cabinet team looks to be a bit fatter, older, and uglier, but still, still as effective, I'm sure. So uh, this year, Madam Mayor, the uh, the uh, deputy leader will be Councillor Edivin taking the portfolio for business and growth. Uh, Councillor Brennan, who unfortunately has had a family tragedy, this can't be with us. His communities and climate change. Uh, Councillor Moore will be finance and customer access. Uh, Councillor English will be taking the environment and safety. And I'm delighted to announce that uh, Councillor Upton is going to rejoin the cabinet with a huge amount of experience and expertise, and he will be having the portfolio for planning and housing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Councillor Edby. Sorry, Councillor Robinson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to go through some administrative uh, things to put forward now for recommendation. Uh, the first is the appointment of the committees and member groups in your paper there, which is agenda item 10. You'll see the recommendation there is to approve the nominations to these committees uh, that are set out in your papers. Uh, I'd just like to this opportunity to thank everyone that sits on these committees, and particularly the chairs, the deputy chairs. It's usually important work, and I am very, very grateful for the contributions they made. I'd like to move that recommendation to uh, of those committees and those memberships as set out in the appendix. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Edigan, yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to second uh, the recommendation on the committees and reserve the right to speak, just, just in case. Councillor Walker? Yes, we're, we're happy to kind of keep going and approve the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Jones? Move it, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussions, Councillor Thomas? No? no? No. Right. In that event, all in favour? That looks as though that's unanimous. I declare the vote carried. Item 11, approval of the timetable of meetings. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to go straight to the recommendation there, and that is to uh, accept the schedule of meetings attached to the appendix in the papers under item 11. Thank you. Councillor Inglis, wish to second. Thank you. I'd like to second that proposal and I reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Do we have any discussions? Okay. All in favour? <coughs> Again, that looks unanimous. I declare the vote carried. Uh, item 12 appointment of representatives to outside bodies. Um, there is one contested appointment at 12 Rural Community Action for Nottinghamshire, which has one seat with two nominations. Yes, as you say, uh, Madam Mayor, we have a schedule there of the uh, outside bodies, uh, but we do have uh, two people who want to contest that appointment there. But I would like to move the recommendation, uh, which sets out uh, in the appendix. The representative to outside bodies, obviously subject then to the vote that will be taken shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moore? Yes, I'd like to uh, second this, uh, this item and uh, obviously subject to the vote. So anyone want to speak? Anybody wanting to, anyone indicating to speak? Councillor Mallander. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm happy to support that and propose that we, I suggest that we'd be taking um, part 12 of the uh, report, the uh, appointment of rural community action uh, for Nottinghamshire as a, as a separate vote. Yeah. Yes, it will be a separate vote. So can we have a vote on the committees by, without the item 12? All in favour? 
Anyone against? No, that item then is carried. Um, we move to the vote then for item 12, the Rural Community Action for Nottinghamshire. All those in favour of Councillor Bailey? All those in favour of Councillor Sue Mallander? Um, I therefore declare Councillor Bailey has been elected to uh, Rural Community Action Nottinghamshire. Uh, item 13, appointment of the monitoring officer's role. Councillor Robinson to move. Yes, thank you. As you'll uh, see in the papers, I'll just the lady to leave the room. <coughs> that um, we uh, are going to be recommending the appointment of a new monitor officer, uh, our current officer on my left hand side. Uh, Sanjit is unfortunately leaving us. I don't say unfortunate because obviously new opportunities, new career for Sanjit. Sanjit joined us in 2018 and has certainly modernised the legal services and brought in a lot of new systems. He's a team and supported the council on several very significant pieces of work, including reviewing the constitution and advising the Freeport and Development Corporation governance. And more recently, she's also been very heavily involved in HR elections and the corporate admin teams. She's provided support to many councillors, myself included, mm. and parishes throughout the time in Rushcliffe. And she's about leaving to go to North Hants. North, North Hants, correct, yes. Which is a larger unitary. And I have to say on behalf of everybody, you've greatly missed. Thank you very much for your contribution and wish you all the very best in your new career. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, move the recommendation in the report, which is uh, to nominate uh, the new monitoring officer, which is Gemma Dennis, that's the lady that disappeared through that door there. Uh, Gemma previously worked for Rushcliffe as a planning officer, both in development control and in planning policy, and she was very involved in the work that led to the adoption of the local plan. She left us eight years ago, and with such a fantastic authority that uh, she's actually come back, and she's been leading the uh, planning enforcement team at Dinkley and Bosworth before qualifying as a solicitor. Jim returned to Rushcliffe in January of this year, sorry, not the eight years ago I mentioned, and our legal services manager, and we're absolutely delighted that she has been successful at the interview panel for the new monitor office post. So without any more ado, I'd like to move the recommendation that's set out on page three, item two, and that is to appoint. That's the right uh, the, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to second that recommendation. And if I could also take the opportunity to thank uh, Mrs. Sill for her contribution and wish her well in the future. And I also look forward to uh, hopefully uh, welcoming the new monitoring office, uh, who, officer who clearly has a wealth of experience. And uh, thank you very much. Second recommendation. Any Councillor Walker? Thank you. Yeah, we would also, as a Labour group, like to thank Sandrit for her support these last three years. We were all newly elected and we relied quite heavily on you and your expertise to guide us through the kind of world of local government. Um, if you ever felt frustrated by our naivety, you never let it show. And, you know, you took every question we asked with, you know, really calmly and you explained the system. So thank you for that. All the best for the new job. Right? We'd also like to say I know she's left, but I'd like to say a big welcome and congratulations to Gemma. And we uh, look forward to filling her inbox with loads of questions as well now. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Jones? Yeah, just to echo thanks to Sanjit for her service and wish her a new job. And uh, I'm sure Gemma will be a, an excellent replacement, having known her in, in her previous roles. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, also many, many thanks to Sajid for her tremendous help over the last uh, 
couple of years, particular, particular mm -hmm. items um, around standards. And uh, yeah, be welcome to uh, Gemma to, to any of y'all. Councillor Thomas. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, last person, but um, also a huge congratulations to um, Sandwich. And looking forward to working with Jana, who I've worked with before as well. So thank you. Councillor Adeline, do you, did you reserve the right? No. Councillor Robinson. Right, all those in favour of the appointment? Well, that's unanimous. Yep. I declare that vote carried. Can Gemma come back? She's gone. <laughs> She's gone. That's it. We've lost her. <laughs> Congratulations, Gemma. Right, item 14, endorsement of the Borough Council's role in the East Midlands Free Fort. Council Robinson. Just ladies and gentlemen, back in March 2021, the, the government uh, allowed the East Midlands site to proceed to Freeport status. And since then, there's been a huge amount of work uh, behind the scenes, working with the local authorities and the landowners involved in the, in the Freeport. And we submitted an outline business case to the government in September 2021, and then a full business case in April 2022. A report went to the cabinet in February 2022, which endorsed the, uh, the, uh, the full business case and delegated actions to the chief executive and the leader on uh, some of the things that we also need to do and the delegated powers to bring that uh, uh, forward. We also made a commitment to bring that back to the uh, to full council, as we are doing today. Uh, the Freeport will be incorporated uh, as an organisation uh, with a, a director of the council on the board. I just want to remind members that this is a very important vehicle to attract very, very high quality new jobs into the area. It's also about the regeneration of the power station, which is due to close in 2024. It's also about attracting very innovative new businesses to this borough, particularly focusing on green energy, on such projects such as uh, sustainable uh, fuel for, uh, for, uh, for aircraft. It also offers significant opportunities to operate with universities for research in green technologies. One of the most important features of the Freeport, it will actually bring into use the power station when it becomes redundant but it's many uniqueness with obviously right by the Trent, by the motorway, with the airport, and obviously now with HS2 coming into that. So I'd like to move that recommendation this evening that A, it uh, approves the, the council joining the Freeport board, and that it approves the leader of the council to act as a director on the East Midland Freeport board. Thank you. Councillor Edelman. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to second the uh, recommendation and reserve the right to speak. So. <laughs> Councillor Walker. Yeah, I was waiting for that, Councillor. <laughs> um, we're going to vote in favour of Councillor Robinson being in the room where these discussions are made on the Freeport. However, we're still deeply concerned about the Freeport and its ability to, live, to deliver on these hefty promises, especially the promise of 61,000 new jobs. The biggest and perhaps the only really positive element of this proposal we worry that the entire project is ideologically based and has the potential to fall very short of the claims and at worst could end up extracting wealth from our communities through multinational corporations that continue to pay zero tax in the places they do business. I would again draw this administration's attention to the community wealth building model that looks not to multinational corporations to solve our economic woes, but rather sees to invest in the people and businesses that already exist in our borough and continues to employ our residents and pay their fair share of tax. We will vote in favour of the recommendation and we sincerely hope that Councillor Robinson and the board will ensure that this isn't a misguided attempt to undo the economic damage done by years of underfunding. We worry that it has the potential to see our region as a tax haven on the edge of Europe so we will continue to push for the wealth remaining in our communities and for good jobs for our residents. 
Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Jones. Yeah, Madam Mayor, we recognise there's a, a lot of complicated work going on in the background for this proposal. Um, and with some reservations, we will be uh, supporting the recommendations and including the heavy burden that Councillor Robinson is taking on himself. Um, the, um, we remain slightly sceptical about the practicalities of a freeport on three disconnected sites. We think the development cooperation is most important. We agree totally that the, um, the power station site needs an initiative, um, whether that's development cooperation or the free port, but something need, need, definitely needs to be done. Uh, if the free port works or, and is capable of working on those disparate sites, um, I, we would very much hope that engineering and, and actual production uh, uh, starts in the, on those sites uh, in a way that might, might wean us off this dependence on China for producing virtually everything that you might want to buy. Um, so with those caveats, uh, we'll be supporting the motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Malander. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, there's a, there are lots of concerns around free ports, around the tax-free status, around... <laughs> what that might mean about the misuse of free ports uh, in other parts of the world and the, the harm that they can cause to wildlife in particular with trafficking of uh, animals and so on. However, with these reservations, we do note that it is important this council has a seat at the free port company. So uh, with reservations to that, but recognizing that we do need to be in the room and fighting the corner, and with the expectation that Councillor Robinson will challenge the other directors to a dance-off if things don't go his way, <laughs> we'll be supporting this motion. Thank you. Well, your guidance. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Thomas. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I have a question and some observations. Uh, the question is, uh, for clarification, please, when the leader of the council changes, does the directorship move to the new leader? Um, and the observations... Whatever we may think about these complex structures that the government is creating to provide tax breaks and extra funding to promote, promote development and what it may do to, the, to stifle business outside these areas, the East Midlands needs to get its fair share along with everyone else and Rushcliffe should be part of this. I'm sure our officers are exploring the financial and legal risks with their usual skill and diligence. Uh, I would take the opportunity to remind everyone once more that the impact on country roads around the area needs to be considered, along with cycle routes and public transport links from all areas of Rushcliffe, not just road connections to Nottingham and Derby and onto the motorway network. The areas of Rushcliffe that are providing housing need sustainable access to the employment created. I would also highlight the net zero goals and ask the leader to ensure that these are at the forefront of development. Um, I think there might be a riot in our ward if the new buildings do not have solar panels on the roofs. Thank you. Councillor Robinson, there's a question to answer. Oh, no. Anybody else? Anyone else? Anybody else? Councillor Devine, you've reserved your right. Uh, nothing to add to the comments. Thank you. Councillor Robinson, I think there's a question to answer. Yes, there is. Yes, yes the, um, in answer to your question, the actual directorship goes with the leadership. So when the leadership changes, the actual directorship will actually go with them. Because obviously, I'm actually, uh, well, the leader is actually representing the council. If I could just pick up a, uh, a few points. And one of the most important ones, and um, I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed with the leader opposition on this, because you're constantly using this phrase about zero tax, which is actually not correct. They pay tax, they pay VAT, they pay stamp duty, they pay corporation tax. So it is actually incorrect and misleading in this chamber to say they pay zero tax. They pay reduced tax and tax incentives, but that is not zero tax, is it? They actually do pay tax. So factually, you're not correct. And it's misleading. It's been picked up by other people on the board that you have been making misleading comments about that because it is not correct. The companies in the Freeport pay corporation tax, they pay VAT, and they also pay stamp duty. So you really need to be careful of that narrative because it's actually incorrect. 
and you are disadvantaged. This is a huge investment going into this area. And it's not just about the Freeport, as Councillor Jones said, about the Development Corporation. It's about HS2 coming into it. And I think we should welcome these initiatives. These are huge investments in this borough with the jobs. And as being emphasized, it's about the green technology that's coming in. If you want to look at a model that's working, look at Teesside. They've done fantastic things. It's a number of years ahead of us for historical reasons but it is actually attracting the jobs and the investment and we are behind. And what's really important that local authorities like ourselves are seen to support this exactly. because we want investment and high quality jobs coming into this area. We know being very, we talk about the cost of living crisis, et cetera. Um, but we know the best way to get out of this is investment and high quality jobs. This is exactly what this is putting itself forward to do. So do ask this support, but most importantly ask for a true narrative. It is not zero tax, okay? I think just the other point I think was made by uh, Councillor Manning that was talking about uh, the actual jobs. Manufacturing, absolutely key. And as a board member, I am certainly going to be uh, advocating that we are bringing manufacturing into this area. Sorry, it wasn't yourself, but sorry, I beg your pardon. But bringing manufacturing into this area, what we do not want to see is obviously the big sheds uh, of the Amazons, etc. We actually want to see those high quality jobs. And as I stressed in my speech at the start, this is also about research. It's about bringing up and, and, and this whole leveling up process, investment. Um, Councillor Thomas talked about infrastructure. Absolutely, it is a big subject of the free ports about bringing that infrastructure around there. We know it's a real bottleneck around there. And I can, I can absolutely assure you that it is taking a lot of discussions about that investment that will go into around that junction 24 and that access. So I really want really about uh, support for the free port and taking this forward. I think it's absolutely key for this borough. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Um, may we now go to the vote on endorsement of the Borough Council's role in the East Midlands Freeport. All those in favour? No vote is carried. Thank you very much. That brings us to the end of our formal meeting here today. Um, I